you pay the ultimate price that we couldn't afford, we could pay. And you took so long to You actually and you went to try the shame. And you were willing to die for us. And this is the greatest news, best price that one can receive. And we thank you, Lord, for paying the ultimate price for us. And so we come to you boldly in the name of Jesus Christ to claim your blessings, your sacrifice, your goodness, your kindness. And we thank you that our future is bright and glorious. And we are confident in your name and the Father. Because of your Son. Not because of what you have done, but because of what he has done. Hmm. And we thank you, Lord. And we pray that this night we pray that tonight you would just speak to our spirit our heart pour out a spirit of blessing we thank you for the wisdom and knowledge you have given him passion, zeal, revelation and for his willingness to impart this to us. Thank you for all the teachers. We thank you for the people like Bible school. And we also pray your blessing for all students in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I didn't hear when he ended the prayer. I wanted him to say it like always remember to end your prayer in the name of Jesus. For upon that name, every knee shall bow, every sickness shall bow, every disease shall bow. Mm. And in the name of Jesus, we have entrance into the presence of God. So we thank you Amen. very much, our brother, for praying. Let me hear what you say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. There is power in that name. Okay, open your Bible, everyone, to Chronicles, Second Chronicles, chapter 25. While you are opening the Bible, listen to me to make to just to make some few statements. You might have observed that, or you will observe, not that you might have, you will observe that some of the accounts and some of the events you will read in the book of Chronicles. Some of them are recorded also in First Kings and Second Kings. And so some persons ask question, how come? And sometimes the way it is written is a little bit different from the way you see it in the First Kings. Now listen, the Bible does not contradict itself but it does complement itself. Thank you. So you should therefore need to understand this. Please, everybody close your microphone now, please, for now, because we are now in the teaching area. Okay. Now, the Bible does not conflict, contradict, or confuse. Take note of my words. It does not conflict, contradict, or confuse people, but rather it complements. So that's why some of you who have been with me for some time, you see that we read a passage of the Bible here, we go to another passage of the Bible, and we see more light being shed into it. 
For example, there are some people who do not understand. I heard someone because of their limited understanding that God created two Adams. And so they say they read about the creation of the of Adam in Genesis chapter one, two, three. And that that Adam fell in chapter three. So when you go to chapter four, you see another Adam being created. When I heard that, I say, what a dopey thing is this? So people don't understand the Bible. And this is why some of them, when you, you, you even appeal to them, try and go to Bible school, try and attend a Bible study. You can never lose. In fact, you will be better placed not to be confused and be deceived and be seduced by some evil spirits. We are in a world of spirits. Lucifer is an evil spirit and he has demons he has sent into the world. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go and read first epistle of John chapter 4. He did mention it that many evil spirits are in the world. You will see it in first John chapter 4. And in the second epistle of Paul's letter to Timothy, you see it in chapter 3. He said that in the last day, you see evil spirits going through people, possessing people, and you have to be vigilant. So when I heard this person who was saying that, uh, in fact, unfortunately, when I heard about it, I was trying to see if I could lay hand on the person, I mean, just reach him to help him. But because it seems he was coming under a kind of seduction, he wouldn't even listen to anybody. What you see recorded in chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4 of the book of Revelation is summarized in chapter 5. It's not, it's not a new Adam. Now, I'm saying that to say this, that there are some things you read or you hear in first and second things and you see some of them again repeated in another way in chronicles so you see chronicles 1 chronicles 2 let me give you the simplest way to help you in jamaica we don't have too many papers but we have at least the gleaner observer the stars in the north, uh, in this, in the, in the west coast, we have what we call the Western Mirror. There used to be another paper published in Ochorios in those days. We subscribed to it, and there's another paper they publish in Mandeville by Melo FM. Now these papers, they try to catch up with the events in the island, and they report as they see it. And you discover that one singular event is reported in different ways by different journalists. Their intention is not to confuse people or to contradict one another, but to report it from their own perspective, the way they see it. Now, those of you who are in the school, you hope you will need to know this when you are doing the canon and inspiration of the Bible. So there are some things as we see them in the Chronicles, uh, you'll see them repeated, maybe first or second Kings. And again, you see some things Jesus said, you see them repeated in the epistles. It's not to confuse, but to shed more light. For example, when the Bible said, when the Bible said in Genesis chapter one, that God made man in his own image, after his own likeness, what does that mean? We are not told in that Genesis 1. And if you go to Genesis chapter 2, in verse 7, you see how God gathered the dust of the earth, put it together, and make out a sculpture and call it man. Man, M-A-N, man or human, woman. 
man man you know that singer in jamaica even if you don't know him you hear the music man are dust man simply means dust so sometimes to make it easier in teaching i say man is soil soul and spirit s s s so man is from the soil he has soul and he has spirits. He is spirit. With spirit, he connects with God, who is the giver of all spirits. And man has soul where he has imagination. The soul of man is the strength of man. That's why the Bible says in Matthew chapter 22. You see it from verse 37 to 40. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. In other words, love God with every particle in you. Every inch of you. Until your love for God is felt in your spirit, soul, and your soil, your body. Otherwise, your love is not wholehearted. Of course, you see it in the Bible, you know. You see it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, where God said, I will sanctify them wholly. I will sanctify them in the spirit, in the soul, in the body. Now, I've said all of this to say that the whole Bible complements one another. And I also said this for you to understand that when I said in Genesis chapter 1, you will see it there in verse 26, 27, 28. Just, read, just to say quickly of them, because I know there are some of you who are here, you are babies spiritually some of you are young men young women spiritually and some of you are adult spiritually i am not talking of your age of your birth and when you realize where are you am i in the elementary school spiritually am i in the secondary school or high school spiritually am i in the college and am i making effort to sustain my experience with God. That's why I never get to a point in your life and feel I have become matured. I have become graduated. I don't need the word of God again. Other things can take priority in my life. God forbid. The day you turn your back to the word of God is the day you begin to backslide. Because... The psalm writer says, said, Wherewither shall a young man cleanse his way, keep himself pure and holy and free from contamination by taking heed unto thy word? Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. I have said this again to say this. That in Genesis 1 from verse 26, you see, and God said, let us make man in our image, that verse 26, after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air. The question is, what is the image and the likeness of God? We are not told here. We are not told here. <laughs> What was the likeness of man when God made him? We are not told here. You need to open another part of the Bible and see the meaning of that. That's why you need to be versatile. You need to be acquainted with the word of God. You need to desire to know more about the word of God. You must hunger to know more about the word of God. Otherwise, you will be living in darkness and you continue to abide in ignorance. But the word of God will illuminate your spirit, throw light into your soul, and give you the power you need and the breakthrough you need. What you see here, which he says now, and let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion 
if you go up there in verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him. Male and female created them. Is that so? So what is the image and the likeness of God? Is man like, is God like man with two foot or two feet? <laughs> is man like, like man, and is God like man with two hands, two eyes, two, two holes in the nose? <laughs> Not at all. This is why you need a teacher. You need a teacher. You may not even need a prophet. You know, some person, they think they need a prophet, they need an apostle. <clears throat> you need a teacher. You know, when you hear about the fivefold ministry, Ephesians chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 11, the fivefold ministry, eh? apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Many persons don't want to bear the title teacher, and that is the title I want. <laughs> Honestly speaking, I prefer the word teacher, rabbi, than even to be called a doctor. What am I doctoring if I can't teach? What am I pastoring if I can't teach? What am I prophesying if I cannot teach? What, what kind of apostle am I if I cannot teach? Because the teacher is the foundation. When you read that passage, the teacher is at the bottom. Sometimes people use their finger. Huh? They say that this one is the apostle, this one is the prophet, this one is the evangelist, is the tallest one, and then this one is the pastor, and this small one is the teacher. But you know something as I was taught? All these other ones try and put this big apostle in your ears. When your ear is scratching you, it cannot enter. <laughs> But you try the small one when your ears are scratching you. You need to hear what they are saying. If you put your hand, it will go inside and then tell you to open your ears. <laughs> so when you read something in the Bible, ask yourself, ask God, what is being said here? What is the image and likeness of God? Number one, when God created, when God created man, the whole information is not here. This was what was revealed to Moses, the man that penned this one down at that time. But when you come to um, Psalm 8, you get more information about that creation. Even though you see more in chapter 2, verse 7. But when you come to look at Psalm, uh, Psalm 8, in verse 4, then you get more information about that man that was made or is made in the image and likeness of God. Psalm 8, quickly open your Bible. Come on. Come, come, come. Open your Bible. Psalm 8 from verse 4. It says, what is man? Man are dust. The man that was made from the dust. What is man? A dust. What is man from the Bible? Man is spirit, soul, and body. What more do we know about man? Look at verse, uh, verse 5. For thou hast made man, thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Genesis did not tell us that. That when God created man, he just made man a little lower than the angels. So the angels do not have any superiority over us. In fact, angels are not permitted to operate in our cosmic world except God sends them on errand to come and minister to us. Any angel that enters our world, he will be prosecuted except God allows them. You discover that the devil couldn't touch Job until God allows him to do it. And the devil can't touch a genuine child of God unless God allow it for some, for some reason. Or that particular believer broke the fence, the seal of his protection. Otherwise, you are well sealed by the blood. But when by secret sin, by manipulation, insincerity and dishonesty, 
you do something, then you break the edge, you open up yourself to attack. So in Genesis 1, verse 26, verse 27, verse 28, we are not giving much detail, but by the, the revelation of the Holy Spirit, the writer of the book of Psalm in chapter 8, he now asks the question, what is man? How come man? What is the composition of man? The components of man? Look at it in that verse four. Uh, we, um, uh, because he said that, what is man that thou art mindful? God is mindful of us. Believe you me. God is mindful of us. In that verse 4, he said, and the son of man that thou visitest him. He does visit us. Hmm? Verse 5, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Just a little lower. That's why it is foolishness and stupidity to be praying to angels. Never pray to angels. Don't go to a church where they are praying to angels or calling the name of angels. You are invoking evil spirit upon yourself. Believe it or not. If you don't believe it, go on doing it. But you may get to a point that there will be no more return for you. Or if you hear his voice today, behave yourself. Conduct yourself right. But you look at in that verse 5. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, in plural. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. Hallelujah. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet. What more information when the Bible say that God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. What is the image and likeness of God? Is God a white man or is God a black man? Hmm? Is God a woman or God a man? Is God an American, a Canadian, Brazilian, African, Ethiopian, Jamaican? How does God look like? <laughs> Welcome to Bible, Bible Club. Open your Bible to Ephesians. Ephesians, quickly. Chapter 4. I'm going there now. Open your Bible. Study to show yourself approved. Don't be lazy in reading the Bible. <laughs> if you are lazy, you pay the price in future. Open your Bible. Ephesians chapter 4. I am reading for you from verse 24. I could read the surrounding later, but let me just quick pick up verse 24. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. What did it say? And I read. I don't just want to quote. It says in that verse 24, and that you put on the new man. Put on the new man, which after God, take note, is created in righteousness and true holiness. When God created man, this language was not used for us then at that time. Because revelation is progressive. It says in this verse 24, and that you put on, put it on on you. Because if any man be in Christ Jesus is a new creature, a new creation. If any man be in Christ Jesus, washed in the blood of the Lamb, you know, repented of sin, renounced sin, forsaken the things of the world, it becomes a new man. When God created Adam and Eve, ladies and gentlemen, there was no sin of any kind. Man was created innocent of evil, innocent of contamination, innocent of sickness or sorrow. Man was created clean, 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 perfect. Because God made man in his own image, after his own likeness, and then honored man with glory and honor. God decorated mankind 
that the angels were curious to look into the mystery of making mankind from the dust of the ground. The angels were curious. I wish I have all the time to show you. And that's why Lucifer couldn't take it. See what? How can God make something out of the dust and it looks so beautiful? Because God, the Bible says he made man just a little lower. And since Lucifer wanted a higher office, God had earlier promoted him, you know. He was one of the highest angels around the throne of God. But because God made man and made angel as free moral being. God made man and made angels as free moral being. The free moral being quality in man and in angel give them the power of imagination, of creativity. Because God is a creator. He gave mankind and gave the angel the power to create. Unfortunately, Lucifer chose to, to create rebellion, disobedience, and that was the beginning of sin. So when people say, where does sin come from? It came from the angel called Lucifer. He was a beautiful angel, decorated, privileged, exalted. If you want to know more, you can check it up in Ezekiel chapter 28, Isaiah chapter 14. You see how much God decorated him. The Bible says, when you were created, he was perfect until sin was found in him. Look at it here. So when you hear that God made man in his own image, after his own likeness, see the image and the likeness of God is righteousness and true holiness. That is the image and the likeness of God. Believe it or not. But believe it for your own good. And you'll be happy forever. I read it again. And that you put on after you become born again. Put on after you have repented of your sin and believe in Jesus. Put on the new man. The new man. The old man was contaminated in Genesis chapter 3. The new man is found in Christ Jesus who died for us and we just celebrated Easter. We have always celebrated Easter. Every new day of the new week is our celebration. This one is just fun fair for the world to see. But every born again believer that goes to church on the first day of the week, I know there are some person maybe seven-day Adventist or Church of God seven-day, whichever day, but make sure that you give worship to God and not to angels. You give worship to God and not to Saturday or Sunday because there's no Saturday in the Bible. There's no Sunday in the Bible, not even Sabbath. I know some of you who perhaps you were on my program on Tuesday nights. The man who asked me a question that he is confused about Sabbath. He said, what, which one is the right one? Is this Sunday or Sabbath, Saturday? I said, you can choose any day and call it your own Sabbath. Sabbath is neither Saturday nor Sunday. That is the truth. Sabbath is neither Saturday nor Sunday. Sabbath is the day you wait upon the Lord to worship him, bless him, and reflect on him. But not to cause confusion in the nation. The nation declared, the world, the commonwealth in those days declared, coming from the time of the Roman Empire to the Great Britain, then to us who are commonwealth nation, that on a particular day, all those who want to worship on Saturday because of their belief in Sabbath, let them agree to meet that day. And those who believe on the resurrection of Jesus on the first day, they meet on Sunday. So Sunday is not in the Bible. Saturday is not in the Bible. So throw it away. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. 
the day you choose to wait upon the Lord and give him worship and spend that time to reflect and reconnect, that is your Sabbath. It's a day of rest. Sabbath simply means rest from labor. Rest and give time to God for worship. Rest and sing some songs of praise. Read the word. Rejuvenate in the spirit. Sabbath. That's what Jesus said. Man was not made for Sabbath. Sabbath was made for man to rest. Let me leave that alone. I am talking about how the Bible interprets one another. I hope some of you will take time to go back to this uh, recording, either on the Facebook or YouTube, and listen to it again. You will never hear some of this even in the Bible school. Because it's not a pre-planned outline. Sometimes when I come to a program, like even when I speak to, to, to students in the class, the Lord will just say, go this direction. And at the end of the day, I have every reason to give thanks to God for guiding me, making me to be sensitive to his voice. God is not a man. Neither the son of man. God is not a human being. He made human being. God is not of flesh and blood. <laughs> no. God is a spirit. John chapter 4 verse 24. And they that must worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. Ye shall know the truth and ye shall be made free. He said, buy the truth and sell it not. Buy wisdom, buy instruction and sell it not. If there be anything not available in our churches, in many churches today, is the truth. The truth. Unfortunately, some church leaders look for a way to engage their members on something that does not help them to know more of the truth. The more truth you know, the happier you become. The more truth you know, the more liberated. The more truth you know, the more breakthrough in your life. What is the likeness and the image of God? Luke's Gospel chapter 1. Come with me now. Come now. <laughs> Are you there? Luke's Gospel chapter 1. The image and likeness. Look at this. I'm deliberately going to read First of all, the bottom. Then I now go back to the top. It says, in Luke chapter 1, verses 74 and 75, it said that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve God without fear. In holiness, and righteousness before him all the days of our life. That is the nature of God. That is the image of God. And that is the reason Jesus emphasized so strongly when he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Because the righteousness of God is the image Holiness is his likeness. That's why he says, follow peace with all men in righteousness. And without holiness, no man shall see God because God is holy and he demands for us to walk righteously. In righteousness, we interact with human, our neighbor. In holiness, we connect with the almighty God. I pray somebody is hearing me. I pray somebody is getting this message. I pray somebody is understanding what we are doing this evening. I'm going to stop here so we do some Bible reading. And then I get back to you all later. Let us pray. Everyone bow your head. Talk to the Lord and say, Lord, show me your way. 
that I may walk with you. Show me your way. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord and say, Lord, help me to know you. Help me to discover who I am in the kingdom of God. The cry of my heart is to love you more. To feel the touch of your hands. Show me your way, Lord. Show me your way, mighty God. Teach me your word. Fill me with your grace. Fill me and feed me with your word, the bread of life. Feed me with the body of Christ. He says, except we eat his flesh and drink his blood, we have no life. Oh God, feed us with that spiritual body of Christ. Feed us with that precious blood he shed on the cross. Somebody say something to God. Say something deep to God, deep, deep from your heart, sincerely. Say something serious. This is a, a day to connect. This is the first week of the new month in April. April is a month of appreciation. Appreciate God in your life. April. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Appreciate what he has done in your soul. Appreciate what he has done in your family. Appreciate him for what he has taken you to do so far. Appreciate him. April. Show me your way, Lord. Show me your way. That I may walk with you. The cry of my heart is to love you more. And to feel the touch of your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody call upon the name of the Lord sincerely. 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 Sincerely call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. Take it serious. The Lord is ministering to us and the Lord is leading me to tell you this is the opportunity for you to plunge into the deep. Plunge into the deep and get something from heaven. Plunge into the deep and say, Lord, help me. I don't want to remain a common Christian. I want something deep done in my soul. Something that will give God glory all the days of my life. Plunge deep. Plunge deep. Plunge deep. Mm. Let us pray. Almighty God. Everlasting Father, you have been wonderful to us in this Bible Readers Club. The people in the world, they have different kinds of club. And those club is for them to gather to drink rum. Mm. Those clubs, they gather to generate money to strategize in business. Sometimes those clubs are cultic in nature. But Lord, this is a club of those that are blood washed. This is a club 
of those who are passionate about heaven. This Bible Readers Club is a club of those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. This club, oh God, is for those who are not satisfied on being on the periphery Amen. of the Christian faith. Those who want more, more, more of God. Hallelujah. Father, we pray you that the things we have heard this night and the things you have opened our eyes this night will, will be so stamped, cemented in our Amen. spirits and our Amen. soul that you, God, by the Holy Spirit, you will remind us even when we are tempted to forget because we shall be judged by the words we have heard and the things that have been read in the Holy Bible. Father, we give you thanks. I pray for everyone here that they will not only be in this club, but that what they have heard they will share with other people that they may benefit from the mm -hmm. same experience. Mm -hmm. They will be able to point people on how to go to this Facebook or go to the YouTube or even the outline the things we discuss, they will share with other people in their churches, in their community, in their places of work. And Lord, the kingdom of God will spread faster and men be delivered from the bondages of the devil. And you, God, will take possession of our being. Renew us, O oh God. Cleanse us. Wash us with Amen. the precious blood of the Lamb and glorify Amen. your holy name in us. O oh God, create in us a clean heart. Yes, Lord. And renew our right spirit within us, yes. O oh God. If there be any sin or iniquity in us, cleanse us. Recreate us, O oh God. Put your stamp upon our soul. But I pray everyone hearing me, make them brand new fire in your hand. Anywhere they go, they don't need introduction because the stamp of the blood of Jesus will be upon their forehead. Oh, yeah. Anywhere they go, their words will be powerful. Their prayer will be powerful. Signs mm. and wonder will follow them. And Jamaica will never remain the same again in the name of Jesus. They will not be captive Amen. to false prophets and false teachers. They'll be delivered from every power of darkness. In fact, anywhere they go and there is a similitude of darkness, that darkness will disappear mm -hmm. because of their presence. Hallelujah. Father, we give you thanks. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you adoration. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everybody say, Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Let's now open our Bible and be remember I'm coming back to you for analysis. Um, please, um, Brother Alex, I don't know whether you, if you are awake, very much awake. I want to you to I want our sister Dawkins. Is Dawkins there? Sister Dawkins. It's not there. Sister Wright. Okay. Brother Alex, please watch out. There are some people that unfortunately they will leave their microphone and all the noise in their room and in the kitchen. You see, somebody's already talking there, quarreling in their room there. Leave their microphone. Please 
as soon as you see them, just close that window. And if they open it again, then cut them out of the meeting. Okay? We love them, but we will not allow one person to disrupt the whole meeting. All right. So we begin to read from Second Chronicles chapter 25. Have your notebook with you. Have your pen with you because I'm coming to ask you a question thereafter. Thank you. We go. Second Chronicles 25. Amaziah was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Yehoadan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Now it came to pass, when the kingdom was established to him, that he slew his servants that had killed the king his father. But he slew not their children, but did as it is written in the law of the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, saying, The fathers shall not die for the children, neither shall the children die for the fathers, but every man shall die for his own sin. Moreover, Amaziah gathered Judah together, and made them captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, according to the houses of their fathers, throughout all Judah and Benjamin. And he numbered them from twenty years old and above, and found them three hundred thousand choice men, able to go forth to war, that could handle spear and shield. He hired also an hundred thousand mighty men of valor out of Israel for an hundred talents of silver. But there came a man of God to him, saying, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee, for the Lord is not with Israel, to wit, with all the children of Ephraim. But if thou wilt go, do it. Be strong for the battle. God shall make thee fall before the enemy, for God hath power to help and to cast down. And Amaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? And the man of God answered, The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Then Amaziah separated them, to wit, the army that was come to him out of Ephraim, to go home again. Wherefore their anger was greatly kindled against Judah, and they returned home in great anger. And Amaziah strengthened himself, and led forth his people, and went to the valley of Salt, and smote of the children of Seir ten thousand. And other ten thousand left alive did the children of Judah carry away captive, and brought them unto the top of the rock, and cast them down from the top of the rock, that they were all broken in pieces. But the soldiers of the army which Amaziah sent back, that they should not go with him to battle, fell upon the cities of Judah, from Samaria even unto beth -horon, and smote three thousand of them, and took much spoil. Now it came to pass, after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites, that he brought the gods of the children of Seir, and set them up to be his gods, and bowed down himself before them, and burned incense unto them. Wherefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amaziah, and he sent unto him a prophet, which said unto him, Why hast thou sought after the gods of the people, which could not deliver their own people out of thine hand? And it came to pass, as he talked with him, that the king said unto him, Art thou made of the king's counsel? Forbear. Why shouldest thou be smitten? Then the prophet forbear, and said, I know that God hath determined to destroy thee, because thou hast done this, and hast not hearkened unto my counsel. Then Amaziah, king of Judah, took advice, and sent to Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come, let us see one another in the face. And Joash, king of Israel, sent to Amaziah, king of Judah, saying, the thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give thy daughter to my son to wife. And there passed by a wild beast that was in Lebanon, and trode down the thistle. Thou sayest, Lo, thou hast smitten the Edomites, and thine heart lifteth thee up to boast. Abide now at home. Why shouldest thou meddle to thine hurt, that thou shouldest fall, even thou, and Judah with thee? But Amaziah would not hear, for it came of God that he might deliver them into the hand of their enemies, because they sought after the gods of Edom. So Joash, the king of Israel, went up, and they saw one another in the face, both he and Amaziah, king of Judah, at Beth Shemesh, which belongeth to Judah. And Judah was put to the worse before Israel, and they fled every man to his tent. And Joash, the king of Israel, took Amaziah, king of Judah, the son of Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, at Beth Shemesh, and brought him to Jerusalem, and break down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate, four hundred cubits. And he took all the gold and the silver, and all the vessels that were found in the house of God with Obed-Edom, and the treasures of the king's house, the hostages also, and returned to Samaria. 
and Amaziah the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived after the death of Joash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, fifteen years. Now the rest of the acts of Amaziah, first and last, behold, are they not written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel? Now after the time that Amaziah did turn away from following the Lord, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. But they sent to Lachish after him, and slew him there. And they brought him upon horses, and buried him with his fathers in the city of Judah. Are you a course creator, coach, or consultant? Alex. Second Chronicles 26. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was sixteen years old, and made him king in the room of his father, Amaziah. He built Elot and restored it to Judah. After that the king slept with his fathers. Sixteen years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty and two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Yecholiah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. And he went forth and warred against the Philistines, and brake down the wall of Gat, and the wall of Yabne, and the wall of Ashdod, and built cities about Ashdod, and among the Philistines. And God helped him against the Philistines, and against the Arabians that dwelt in Gurbaal, and the Mehunims. And the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah. And his name spread abroad, even to the entering in of Egypt, for he strengthened himself exceedingly. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem, at the corner gate, and at the valley gate, and at the turning of the wall, and fortified them. Also he built towers in the desert, and digged many wells, for he had much cattle, both in the low country and in the plains, husbandmen also, and vine dressers in the mountains, and in Carmel, for he loved husbandry. Moreover, Uzziah had an host of fighting men that went out to war by bands, according to the number of their account, by the hand of Yeiel, the scribe, and Maaseiah, the ruler, under the hand of Hananiah, one of the king's captains. The whole number of the chief of the fathers of the mighty men of valor were two thousand and six hundred, and under their hand was an army, three hundred thousand and seven thousand and five hundred, that made war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the host shields, and spears, and helmets, and habergeons, and bows, and slings to cast stones. And he made in Jerusalem engines, invented by cunning men, to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks, to shoot arrows and great stones withal. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped, till he was strong. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God, and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. And Azariah the priest went in after him, and with him fourscore priests of the Lord that were valiant men. And they withstood Uzziah the king, and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary. Sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed, neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord God. Then Uzziah was wroth, and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with the priests, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priests in the house of the Lord, from beside the incense altar. And Azariah the chief priest, and all the priests, looked upon him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead, and they thrust him out from thence. Yea, himself hasted also to go out, because the Lord had smitten him. And Uzziah the king was a leper unto the day of his death, and dwelt in a several house, being a leper, for he was cut off from the house of the Lord. And Yotam his son was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Uzziah, first and last, did Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amotz, write. So Uzziah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the field of the burial which belonged to the kings. For they said, He is a leper, and Yotam his son reigned in his stead. Start
Chronicles 27. Yotam was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Yerusha, the daughter of Zadok, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Uzziah did. Howbeit he entered not into the temple of the Lord, and the people did yet corruptly. He built the high gate of the house of the Lord, and on the wall of Ophel he built much. Moreover, he built cities in the mountains of Judah, and in the forests he built castles and towers. He fought also with the king of the Ammonites, and prevailed against them. And the children of Ammon gave him the same year an hundred talents of silver, and ten thousand measures of wheat, and ten thousand of barley. So much did the children of Ammon pay unto him, both the second year and the third. So Yotam became mighty, because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God. Now the rest of the acts of Yotam, and all his wars and his ways, lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. He was five and twenty years old when he began to reign, and reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And Yotam slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Ahaz his son reigned in his stead. Second Chronicles 27 Yotam 28 now. Ahaz was twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. But he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord, like David his father. For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, and made also molten images for Balim. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom, and burnt his children in the fire, after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. He sacrificed also, and burnt incense in the high places, and on the hills, and under every green tree. Wherefore the Lord his God delivered him into the hand of the king of Syria, and they smote him, and carried away a great multitude of them captives, and brought them to Damascus. And he was also delivered into the hand of the king of Israel, who smote him with a great slaughter. For Pekah, the son of Remaliah, slew in Judah an hundred and twenty thousand in one day, which were all valiant men, because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. And Zikri, a mighty man of Ephraim, slew Maaseah, the king's son, and Atrikam, the governor of the house, and Elkanah, that was next to the king. And the children of Israel carried away captive of their brethren two hundred thousand women, sons, and daughters, and took also away much spoil from them, and brought the spoil to Samaria. But a prophet of the Lord was there, whose name was Oded. And he went out before the host that came to Samaria, and said unto them, Behold, because the Lord God of your fathers was wroth with Judah, he hath delivered them into your hand, and ye have slain them in a rage that reacheth up unto heaven. And now ye purpose to keep under the children of Judah and Jerusalem for bondmen and bondwomen unto you. But are there not with you, even with you, sins against the Lord your God? Now hear me, therefore, and deliver the captives again, which ye have taken captive of your brethren, for the fierce wrath of the Lord is upon you. Then certain of the heads of the children of Ephraim, Azariah the son of Yohanan, Berechiah the son of Meshinamot, and Yetzikiah the son of Shalom, and Amasa the son of Hadlai, stood up against them that came from the war, and said unto them, Ye shall not bring in the captives hither, for whereas we have offended against the Lord already, ye intend to add more to our sins, and to our trespass, for our trespass is great, and there is fierce wrath against Israel. So the armed men left the captives, and the spoil before the princes, and all the congregation. And the men which were expressed by name rose up, and took the captives, and with the spoil clothed all that were naked among them, and arrayed them, and shod them, and gave them to eat, and to drink, and anointed them, and carried all the feeble of them upon asses, and brought them to Jericho, the city of palm trees, to their brethren. Then they returned to Samaria. At that time did King Ahaz send unto the kings of Assyria to help him. For again the Edomites had come and smitten Judah, and carried away captives. The Philistines also had invaded the cities of the low country, and of the south of Judah, and had taken Beth Shemesh, and Ahalon, and Gederot, and Shocho, with the villages thereof, and Timna, with the villages thereof, Gimso also, and the villages thereof, and they dwelt there. For the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz king of Israel, for he made Judah naked, and transgressed sore against the Lord. And Tiglat Pileser, king of Assyria, came unto him, and distressed him, but strengthened him not. For Ahaz took away a portion out of the house of the Lord, and out of the house of the king, and of the princes, and gave it unto the king of Assyria, but he helped him not. 
and in the time of his distress did he trespass yet more against the Lord. This is that king Ahaz. For he sacrificed unto the gods of Damascus, which smote him. And he said, Because the gods of the kings of Syria help them, therefore will I sacrifice to them, that they may help me. But they were the ruin of him, and of all Israel. And Ahaz gathered together the vessels of the house of God, and cut in pieces the vessels of the house of God, and shut up the doors of the house of the Lord. And he made him altars in every corner of Jerusalem. And in every several city of Judah he made high places to burn incense unto other gods, and provoked to anger the Lord God of his fathers. Now the rest of his acts, and of all his ways, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And Ahaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city, even in Jerusalem. But they brought him not into the sepulchres of the kings of Israel. And Hezekiah his son reigned in his stead. Second Chronicles 30 And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. For the king had taken counsel, and his princes, and all the congregation in Jerusalem, to keep the Passover in the second month. For they could not keep it at that time, because the priests had not sanctified themselves sufficiently, neither had the people gathered themselves together to Jerusalem. And the thing pleased the king and all the congregation. So they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba even to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem, for they had not done it of a long time in such sort as it was written. So the posts went with the letters from the king and his princes throughout all Israel and Judah, and according to the commandment of the king, saying, Ye children of Israel, turn again unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and he will return to the remnant of you, that are escaped out of the hand of the kings of Assyria. And be not ye like your fathers, and like your brethren, which trespassed against the Lord God of their fathers, who therefore gave them up to desolation, as ye see. Now be ye not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto the Lord, and enter into his sanctuary which he hath sanctified for ever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. For if ye turn again unto the Lord, your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that led them captive, so that they shall come again into this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful, and will not turn away his face from you, if ye return unto him." So the posts passed from city to city, through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh, even unto Zebulun, but they laughed them to scorn, and mocked them. Nevertheless, divers of Asher and Manasseh, and of Zebulun, humbled themselves, and came to Jerusalem. Also in Judah the hand of God was to give them one heart, to do the commandment of the king and of the princes, by the word of the Lord. And there assembled at Jerusalem much people to keep the feast of unleavened bread in the second month, a very great congregation. And they arose and took away the altars that were in Jerusalem, and all the altars for incense took they away, and cast them into the brook Kidron. Then they killed the Passover on the fourteenth day of the second month, and the priests and the Levites were ashamed, and sanctified themselves, and brought in the burnt offerings into the house of the Lord. And they stood in their place after their manner, according to the law of Moses the man of God. The priests sprinkled the blood, which they received of the hand of the Levites. For there were many in the congregation that were not sanctified. Therefore the Levites had the charge of the killing of the Passovers for every one that was not clean, to sanctify them unto the Lord. For a multitude of the people, even many of Ephraim and Manasseh, Issachar and Zebulun, had not cleansed themselves, yet did they eat the Passover, otherwise than it was written. But Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, The good Lord pardon every one that prepareth his heart to seek God, the Lord God of his fathers, though he be not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. And the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah, and healed the people. 
And the children of Israel that were present at Jerusalem kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with great gladness. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing with loud instruments unto the Lord. And Hezekiah spake comfortably unto all the Levites that taught the good knowledge of the Lord. And they did eat throughout the feast seven days, offering peace offerings, and making confession to the Lord God of their fathers. And the whole assembly took counsel to keep other seven days. And they kept other seven days with gladness. For Hezekiah king of Judah did give to the congregation a thousand bullocks, and seven thousand sheep. And the princes gave to the congregation a thousand bullocks, and ten thousand sheep, and a great number of priests sanctified themselves. And all the congregation of Judah, with the priests and the Levites, and all the congregation that came out of Israel, and the strangers that came out of the land of Israel, and that dwelt in Judah, rejoiced. So there was great joy in Jerusalem, for since the time of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, there was not the like in Jerusalem. Then the priests, the Levites, arose and blessed the people, and their voice was heard, and their prayer came up to his holy dwelling place, even unto heaven. Okay, that's where we stop for the day. Thank you very much. Help us to look for how we can get this other thing, because the various intrusions of adverts, we cannot have total control, but... If we need to edit it for future recording. You know, brethren, welcome back. <laughs> Let me change the no. Okay. Now, I want to welcome you back. I just feel strongly the Lord is blessing us and the Lord is speaking to us. I want to encourage you that whenever we are doing Bible reading, open your ears, open your spirits, because God is speaking. We used to have a program um, I used to have a program with Bishop Delford Davis um, on his television program. The program is called The Bible Speaks. I so love that program. You know that what he, you know, the we we sit in a panel. Maybe he may even hear me saying this. And uh, he said, Let the Bible speak. And the Bible speaks without apology. The Bible speaks with clarity, without any ambiguity. Forgive me for that big jargon. That is without confusion. The Bible speaks when you know the Bible. And that's my aim in this Bible Readers Club. That you get to a stage, those of you who are here, maybe you are elders in your church, you are leaders, you are Christian workers in your church. When you begin to teach the Bible, they will say, it is not the man talking. It is the Bible talking to us. That's my aim. That's my goal. And I'm, I'm sure we are getting there. Those who come to this Bible Readers Club, those who listen to my program, either Divine Connection or you attend the Bible reading, and I also thank God for some of you, you join us on Tuesdays for the Bible study. Every Tuesday, 10 o'clock, um, we are on the Facebook. Some who are in the offices, um, they join us. In fact, you'll be surprised we had a Bible study. This just um, on Tuesday uh, morning. And over 500 people have visited that Bible study. <laughs> Over 500 people. If I were to look at the physical number of those who were there, you wouldn't even get one tenth of that because they are not available. But with the modern technology, people can be at work, they are self-employed and whatever they are doing, and they are able 
to join the Bible reading. People all the way in Europe, in US, in UK, in Africa. You can check it up when you go there. Sometimes I'll be asking them, write and let me know where you're calling from. Now let us go back to what we have read today. Um, I told you something before we began that some of the things you have seen in the book of Chronicles, you would have heard about some of them in the book of Kings. And I told you that that is how the Bible was allowed to be written by the Holy Ghost, according to 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 19, 20, and 21. How God, the Holy God, uh, possessed holy men with the Holy Ghost to write the Holy Bible. I say it again. How the Holy God in heaven possessed holy men with the Holy Ghost to write the Holy Bible. That is the inspiration and how we have the canonization. Do we not want to go back what have we learned this evening? There's a lot of food. And when I ask or call anybody, try your best to answer my question. Don't avoid it. Because that question will come back to you later. Try. And whenever we are here, we only, just, we only spend just, you see, the time is running. I'm looking at the clock on the wall. If you cannot keep awake, and alive, and also look critically at the Bible. What is the Bible saying to me? Then you are just religious. You are not seeking for righteousness. Listen to me. Religion is not righteousness. Religion is rituals. When you go to the revival, <laughs> Go to Poco, go to Voodoo, go to the Hindus and the Buddhists. Eh? They go to all this Islam and the Confucianists. You see, religion. <laughs> Even go to the Judaism, you see, religion. But we are not called to religion. Because Jesus has met all that would have required religious, religious rituals at Calvary. Colossians chapter 1. All that would have been required in us to slaughter animal, sprinkle the blood, burn candle, burn incense, sprinkle holy water, drink olive oil, and then hang rags of different kinds on our body. They are no more necessary. You know, I was just looking for my hymn book. <laughs> because this song came to my mind now. At the cross, at the cross. When I first hear the sound. Now, go back to where we started. You know, we have read five chapters now from chapter 25, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, six chapters. We have read six chapters. So go back to chapter 25. Let me ask you, you have just two minutes to make contribution. Can you point out anything in chapter two? that fascinated you or um, challenged you or you feel this is something that we should put finger on? Anybody? I'll give you open door. Just to wrap up, praise the Lord. Um... Just mention your name, where you are, and then tell us from which chapter, what verse you are commenting on. Go ahead. Anyone? I. Um, I. Okay. One, one after the other. Just tell us your name, where you are, 
Remember, you have two minutes, so go straight and hit the nail on the head. Go ahead. Okay, so Ramisha, right, from Mapen okay. campus. So my question is, what I realized throughout all the chapters, five chapters, is that whenever the kings, the rulers reach a level of wealth, or a, level, a, a certain amount of years in, in ruling, mm -hmm. they tend to turn away from God and do foolishness and die. But Ezekiah made a big difference to the people of Judah and unto God. He was the only one that has made a difference. Beautiful. Beautiful. If, you're, if, if, I, if I could see your face, I'll give you a big clap. <laughs> Is that, um, are you a student at Maypen? Or you are not a student there? Hello? Yes, sir, I am. Um, Are you, what's your name again? I didn't get your name. Okay. Ramisha Wright. Okay, I got you now. I've just seen your picture. <laughs> <laughs> now, you are very, very correct and accurate. Good observation. Because, you saw that <clears throat> it's not only that instance, you know, as it were then, so it is still today. The same devil that make people to puff up and brag up and become pompous, if I have any other adjective. It was the same incident that happened to Lucifer. Some people, they start small. They are humble when God called them into the ministry, into leadership, to become a king, to become an elder. Think about Saul. Saul that even when Samuel was to anoint him, he was bending down. He was so humble. But when he became king, after some victory, <laughs> if Saul ever hear that I am going somewhere else to annoy somebody I am dead and it was then God now told Samuel what he must do go there that you have come to do some worship and in the process do the screening to see whom I need in the house of Jesus so sister Wright you are very correct you are very correct. Some of them tried, and some of them, they don't do enough. For example, um, okay, I'll need to give somebody else a chance, but look at verse 2 of chapter 25. He said, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Can somebody comment on that, please? This king, Amaziah, who began to reign, and he reigned 20 and 9 years in Jerusalem, and his mother was um, Jehoda of Jerusalem, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. I want somebody to make comment on that. Anybody, please. Yes, Rachel Bokola. Okay, you're welcome, ma'am. Yes, sir. And as I understand this passage, that's very fast, that someone can become as a, can be a religious person without salvation. And any religious man can try it as just a, a moral we can call it a moral exercise that he practiced. And because he was not uh, having connection with God, mm -hmm. he just moral. And that's why the Bible says at the end of his life, pride entered because he wasn't having a perfect heart. And that is why the Bible says 
when the foundation is being destroyed, what can the righteous do? Because he was not having a solid foundation, he was not born again. So we can call it in our own time now. A lot of people, they may be just moral, they can be just religious without connection with God. And that's why there are many, that's why he was popped up at the end of his life because he was not having a root in the Lord. He was not having divine connection with God. That's the Thank interpretation you. I understand with it. Thank you very much. I'd like to hear one more. Any other person here? Look at that passage very well. Um, that, uh, it, And he did that, which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Can you point out somewhere in the New Testament or in the Old Testament where you can use an example to explain this? Anybody? Come on, students. You can't just keep quiet. You are all ministers. Good night, sir. You're welcome. Who is this? I'm Charlene Taylor. Okay. Saint from St. Thomas, Kingston. Okay. okay. That's right. Um, when I looked at this passage, that was the verse that I highlighted, mm -hmm. right? And um, um, our sister alluded to some of what I had to say, that mm -hmm. we, because we know what we are supposed to do, we, we tend to go through the motions. Mm -hmm. So he knew what was supposed to be done and he started, mm -hmm. but then because he did not have, as she said, that connection with the Lord. Um, mm -hmm. In St. Matthew chapter 15 and uh, verse 8, mm -hmm. verse 7, right, when Jesus was speaking to the, the scribes and Pharisees, and he called them hypocrites. In verse um, 7, in verse 8, he said, these people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth and honor it me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So, um, it could be alluded to us in Please, present day. Join verse 9 to 8 to make it. You are, you are on the right track, you know. Join, oh, read verse that. 9? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Verse 9. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Okay. You are, in, you are on the right track. Your comment. Finish up. Hmm. Right. And uh right. So we just do the, the go through the motions as I said before. We know what it is. Go to church on Sunday. This is what I want to do. My moral principles, I don't lie, I don't steal, I do whatever. But we're not doing it from a place of love for God or in service to the Lord. Yes. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Your name again, please. Charlene Taylor. It's Nurse Taylor, sir. Pardon? It's Nurse Taylor. Taylor? Nurse. Nurse from St. Thomas. Oh, oh, but I've not seen you in the class for some time. What happened to you? <laughs> my, my daughter was sick, sir. Oh, sorry. I did send a message. My daughter was sick for two weeks. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Maybe they forgot to tell me. Anyhow, I'm glad that okay, I'm, thank you for your contribution. Um, what our sister has said is perfect because the place she quoted, I had it in mind. You see, there are those, they are in the church. They sing in the choir. They do the work of usher. Some of them are elders. They even sit on the platform. There are some who are in prominent, conspicuous position. They are only there to be seen. That's what he says there, that they did that which was right in the sight of God. There are persons you see them on Sunday, um, wherever you are, maybe Bible study, you see them figuratively, figuratively. You see them there, but their heart is far away from God. Their, their heart is far away from God. You know, when you look at, <clears throat> look at James, see what James said. There are a lot of persons who may not understand, but you need to understand because you are here. In James chapter 4, look at verse, uh, from verse 7, 8, 9, and 10. 
In verse 7, he said, submit yourselves to God. Therefore, then you'll be able to resist the devil and the devil will flee from you. Then verse 10 now say, draw near unto God. And then he, God, will draw near unto you. But you must cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. There are those who are in the house of God, they are double-minded. Some of them are pastors, pastors' wives. Some of them are elders, deacons, choir master, choir mistress, musicians. You don't see many musicians in many churches. Ah, they're only there to play instrument. The moment they start preaching, they are gone. Those who sing special in the choir, the moment they finish singing, they put up one finger, they go from the back, gone. And by the time the pastor is preaching, half of the church is empty. They are only there to, to be seen. So outwardly, they feel appreciated. But we don't want to go beyond that. If we want God to save us and to bless us, we have to seek him with all our hearts, with all our mind. Yeah, let me have more comments. Good comments. Good comments. Yes. Any other person there? We still have about 10 minutes to go. Yes. Good night, Pastor. You're welcome. Good night, Pastor. Uh, my name is Eric Pastor from Kingston. I'm um, not hearing uh, speak into your microphone, speak into the whatever instrument. Uh, you are my name is Eric Pastor. Okay. From Kingston. Okay. Um, I'm looking at verse 26. Where you chapter are, what? Um it's chapter, the main chapter is 18 and 19. Chapter what? Chapter, chapter what? 26. Okay. Chapter 26. Um, okay. Verse, the main verse is 18 and 19, but the entire scripture, when he talks about UIL, when he just started to reign, okay. he, he do what is right in yes. the sight of God. Yes. And he became mighty. God bless him and prosper him against the Philistine. And like many Christians, start out right, mm -hmm. righteous, doing the will of God, doing mm -hmm. what God wants them to do. But yes. when you go down to verse 18, yes. and it said, um, and no, verse 16, but when he was strong, his yes. heart was lifted up, his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God. And mm -hmm. went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the mm -hmm. altar, mm -hmm. upon the altar, uh, in inc incense. Um. So he knew that it's it was the priest that's supposed to burn, but because he feel that he was so mighty, and he gained all those power, he feel that he could do anything in the sight of God and get away with it. Mm -hmm. But he was wrong. Because God is a God of order. Mm -hmm. And God is no respecter of any person, no matter what you have or mm -hmm. where, where he has taken you to. And when he, um, the priest Azariah, go and talk to him about it and mm -hmm. tell him that it was wrong, he was yes. upset. Mm -hmm. He was very upset. Mm -hmm. And there, even when he was still have the incense in his hand, God allowed the leper to come upon him. Mm -hmm. So he gets his punishment right away. So no matter how mighty as, as pastor or Christians, we be, God allow us to get, we must always remember that his God is in control because he, because God has helped him so much, he feels that he's now mightier than God. So he mm -hmm. can do whatever he will and he will get away with it. But that's not how God works. So he, God was, he was wrought with the priest and right away right away you see him get lepers and somebody lead him out and he he was in that punishment right throughout till the time of his death yes thank you very very much very very much you hit the nail on the head very good um our sister um like the the lady who spoke earlier sister right um you know one of the thing all of us 
all of us, when I say all of us, I mean all of us, including myself. Always remember where you are coming from and who you were before you were saved. There are some persons, especially when they have the privilege of going to the college, go to university, they travel abroad, fly the world, they come back, they become bigger than their parents, they become more enlightened than their pastor. Nobody can talk to them anymore. Their neck becomes fat. This person, as our sister had said, it was not the duty of kings to offer sacrifices. Our God is a God of order and discipline. And even when they corrected him, it's like, who are you to correct me? Now remember Nebuchadnezzar. God has to make him to go into the bush for seven years. His hair grew. And Daniel earlier warned him, you know. Daniel earlier warned Nebuchadnezzar. And even his own son Belshazzar knew mm -hmm. how God punished his father. Mm -hmm. But he also did the same thing mm -hmm. until he saw the the handwriting on the wall. He saw the handwriting on the wall, but he did not see the person mene, mene teke, of a sin. You are judged and your days are numbered. I pray we all hear, we learn from what we are hearing. Who, who is going to give us the final comments? I need to somebody um, who will see some. A lot of things are here. I wrote, I wrote some of them there, but... I want you guys to, you know, exercise your critical thinking. You know, yeah, let me hear somebody here. Good night, good night, Pastor. Good night, people of God. My name is Sonia Crawford from You have two minutes, please. You have two okay. minutes, please. Okay. okay, Pastor. I was just looking back in, in Second Chronicle 26. Okay. And as you were speaking about Nebuchadnezzar, I was looking at the pride. It is most of the kingdom that that um that that never make it out that that give in it's all about pride when i read about about them it is pride that come upon them and when pride come upon you you want it to be your own god you want it to be like you you better than doing the things of god because you wanted you to be seen in a sense so when you speak about nebuchadnezzar i was mm -hmm. just reflecting back and even joshua too you understand because in the book, um, Joshua was, it was pride when Joshua, when Joshua was refusing to seek the Lord. And because of that, he lost the battle. Understand? So I was looking at the pride that take us over whenever the Lord tried to lift us up. We tried to step out of his presence and do our own thing. And that is a part of pride. So that was, that's my input to, to these scriptures. Thank you. You are right in the first place, but the Joshua own was not pride. It was mm -hmm. it was it was an omission that was costly. Okay. Because you know what he did not do what we call due diligence. So it was um, you see pride is a deliberate deviation from an instruction mm -hmm. given by God. Mm -hmm. Okay. You will see that in. That same James I read before, James chapter 4, verse 6. And again, the book of Proverbs say, pride goeth before destruction. So pride is a deliberate choice of rebellion. Pride was the problem of Saul. Pride was the problem of Samson when he wanted to marry a strange woman and his mother and father said, why do you want to go and get a wife in a strange land? Don't you find any woman among your people here to, you know, to marry? He said, give her to me. It pleased me. The consequence was his eyes. He has to die prematurely, Samson. So pride is what kills some people. Remember Acts of the Apostle in the New Testament, chapter 12, of course, um, in the case of uh, the, the governor called Herod, when he, he has killed James, he's waiting for Peter to be killed. 
And he came and spoke as an orator. He spoke so eloquently and fluently. And when he finished speaking, he said, this must be the voice of a God. This must be the voice of a God. The Bible said he did not give God the glory. And God sent an angel to mash up his belly. Worms on the spot ate him. Worms ate him up on the stage. So we have to be very careful. I agree with you. There are some people, um, even in the church, God forbid, even some pastors, you know, we have to be very careful. If there be anything, I always remind myself. One of our lecturers in, in those days when I was in the college, he said, remember, you were part of the congregation before God picked you up dress you up and place you where you are to lead his people. Always remind yourself. Always remind yourself you were part of the congregation and then God picked you up, wash you, clean you up, dress you up and say, lead my people. Remember, Moses was a fugitive. Moses was a fugitive in the sense that he was running away from Pharaoh. But this same Moses who ran away from, from Pharaoh, he was now became a labor, a laborer at the backyard of um Jethro. And Jethro now gave Moses one of his daughters because he was helpful. Even though Moses had the consciousness that it seems God was leading me to be a leader. But I don't know, something must have gone wrong. That mistake that Moses made by killing one of the Egyptians sent him into the cooler for 40 years. Sent him to the backyard of Jethro for 40 years. It was after 40 years when within, within that period, separated from his mother, from his father, uh, he got married. Remember, Jethro was not a Jew. If you don't know, you remember when Aaron and Miriam were gossiping about uh, Moses. They referred to his wife as Ethiopian woman. So not a Jew, not even an Israelite. And that was why God rebuked Aaron and punished also Miriam. He said, why is it that you did not respect your brother? But when the time came for God to use him, because even though that period that Moses left Egypt, you know, it's, it's like waiting upon the Lord. I don't know what God wants me to do. I thought God has called me to deliver my people, but it seems not so. They that wait upon the Lord. <laughs> shall renew their strength. I wish somebody would sing that song for us later. But we are told it was while he was busy at the backyard of, Fair, uh, of uh, Jethro, one of the days he saw a bush burning. But there was an excitement in the burning bush. The bush was not consuming. He saw the fire, but he did not see the smoke that should make the smoke, uh, the, the, the bush to burn off. So it was interesting, unusual. He drew nearer to the bush that was burning without consuming. Go and read it in your Bible. When God saw his excitement, he heard the voice of God. You will hear the voice of God in the name of Jesus. I say you who are hearing me this night, wherever you are, you will hear the voice of God because you are getting excited with this Bible study, Bible Reader's Club. And really, listen to me. You will not hear the voice of God until you get excited with the things of God. There are some people, they are in the church until donkey years. They don't hear from God because they are never excited about the things of God. They are just in the church to while away time. They read the Bible, not with all their hearts. They have no systematic way of reading the Bible. They just read the Bible randomly, 
zigzagly. Uh -uh. You can't do that. If you want God to use you, hello, uh, you must be excited about the things of God. It was when God saw Moses excited, God said, stop there. Remove your shoe. But where you are now is not the same as it was. You are now on the holy ground. <laughs> it was there God now spoke according to Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. I can sleep in the midnight and remember what God told Moses. And that vision that Moses saw about the burning bush, but that never consumed, eh, was forever guided Moses to run for God for the next 40 years. From that particular encounter that Moses had with the burning bush, that was the turnaround. That was where he got the ministry of redemption. Look at it, what God told it in Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. And the Lord said, that was when he saw the burning bush. And the Lord, you know, let me just read a little, because it's a very interesting story. Find it to read chapter 3. When he saw the burning bush um, from verse 2. Yeah. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. Hear this. In a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. That's strange. When you see a bush burning, normally you see the, you know, the grass and all that, but it wasn't so. But what happened when he, when that happened? Look at what uh, uh, verse three. And Moses said, "I will now turn aside and see this great sight. It's an excitement. This great why the bush is not burnt. When the Lord saw, when the Lord saw Moses, that he turned aside to see God. Now called unto him out." Of the midst of the bush, hallelujah, <laughs> and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I, Lord. Eh? And he said, Draw not near hither, put off thy shoes. I'm going to give you another shoe, put off thy shoes from all thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is now a holy ground. How come? Moses had been passing through that place all the while. So it wasn't holy ground that time. The day God calls you, you have stepped into a holy ground. You have begun to wear a different kind of shoe. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I believe God is speaking to somebody this night. I believe God is calling somebody into the light. I believe somebody is receiving an anointing this night. Somebody's yoke is being destroyed and somebody is being given a special unction and assignment this night. Huh? Look at what God told him in verse 6. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And, Mo and Moses hid his face, and he was afraid to look upon God. My friend, are you excited about the things of God? Do you get excited? Do you have enthusiasm within you? Do you have something? I want more of God. I want to please God. I want to work for God. I want to give something for God. I want to do something to please God. I want to walk in the pathway of righteousness. I want to do that which will make God to be happy with me. You must be excited. You want God to use you? You want God to speak to you? You want to hear his voice? You must be excited. You must remember you are wearing a different shoe now. You are on a holy ground. Wow. wow. <laughs> ah. Anyhow, I just have to close. I want to say thank you. Let me... Is there anybody there from Santa Cruz? 
anybody in the class from Santa Cruz? Yes, sir. Who is he or she? Um, Shaquille Cohen. Who? Shaquille Cohen. Or oh, Shaquille Cohen? Is that a pastor? Not yet, not as yet, but in this spirit. Okay, in this spirit. Appreciate that. That's good. Are you a student over there? Yes, sir. Okay, you are a new student? Um, second year. Second year. Did you hear the voice of God talking to you this night? Yes, sir. Okay. Pray for us to close. Go ahead and pray. Greet everybody, then pray. Good night, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Most righteous and heavenly Father, I come before you tonight to give you a thanks. To give you a thanks for our pastor or this tonight, our Father. For giving him the word to encourage us tonight, our Father. I thank you for your word and your Holy Spirit. I thank you, O Father, for anointing us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Our Father, and continue to guide and protect us, continue to help us to hunger and thirst after your righteousness, continue to keep us together as a group, to empower us, our Father, to unleash us and the nation, to bless, to bring the word, our Father, and the unfiltered word, the truth of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Continue Amen. to grow, teach our Father, the students of Deep of Life Bible School, our Father. I thank you for this school. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I want to add something to the prayer. Thank you very much, for my brother. I appreciate it. And I hope to know you soon. See you. Let me pray with you all again. Almighty God. Almighty God. Thank you for your revelation of this night. Lord, I am praying especially for everyone present in this club. I am praying, mighty God, for you to reveal yourself to every participant. Lord, I am praying that they will hear your voice in their dreams. Carry on notice. Close your mic, please. Thank you. Sorry, Lord, sorry, sorry. Lord, we pray that what you have revealed to all these nights, I pray specifically as Moses saw the burning bush and heard the voice of that angel and you spoke so clearly. Lord, I believe there are men and women in this club. You are speaking straight into their hearts because you want to use them to liberate people. You have to speak into the hearts of Moses before you empowered him to go and engage the same Pharaoh that he ran away from. Lord, Jamaica needs us. For this, our island to be turned around from darkness into light, to be turned away from idolatry and adultery under the guise of people coming to enjoy Immorality is everywhere rampant. Lord, we pray that you 
come and help this our nation. Help the church, heal the church, empower the church to liberate people from Egypt and set the captives free. Lord, I pray one more time that everyone participating in this club will hear your voice in a very special way in Jesus' name. I pray for all those on the Facebook. I pray for those who are not in Jamaica, but they are in the diaspora. I pray for those who are hearing us from other countries and other continents. Father, and those who will listen to this program later, let there be a special divine deposit of your presence in the life of every one of us. Take us to higher ground. Even those of us who know you and we've yes. been ministering, Lord, we pray you take us to higher ground of yes. your revelation. Thank you. And thank you again. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. Let me hear everybody say amen. 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 For those of you who may, on Sunday, remember, if you have access to Love Radio, join us on Love Radio, 2.30, Love Radio, every Sunday. And then on Tuesday, join us at the Bible study. You call, it doesn't matter wherever you are. Just go to my Facebook, Augustine OD, at 10 in the morning, and be part of the Bible study. And please, even what we have done this night, when you leave the Zoom, go to the Facebook, share with as many as possible. Share with your church members, share with as many as possible. That is the only way the truth can spread. Have a good night to all of you. And God bless you. And bless you. God bless you too, Pastor Odi and all others. God bless you. Good night to you. Good night everyone. God bless you. God bless you. Have a good night. Bless you all. Good night, Pastor. Good night, everyone.